All right, so here is a new project we're starting. This is a Chinese porcelain vase, which we're calling the dragon vase, because it's got this red dragon on it. And what I did here is uh, what I normally do with something of this size, is I always do a rehearsal assembly before I start putting glue on things uh, just so I don't have any unpleasant surprises when I start to build it <clears throat> and so that is exactly what I got in this case where's my hole uh, we ended up with this pretty good size hole in this side here I don't have these pieces um, they're gone uh, so I have to fill that. Uh, another issue is the um, the top doesn't fit in. You can't fit it in once it's all filled. So I have to put this in before I put the two halves of the top together. So that, that's a minor point. Uh, the other issue is this. <clears throat> this is the impact point. This is where all the cracks radiate from. Uh, that forensically that tells me where the vase landed. <laughs> this is the point at which it took a really hard hit. Inside this hole is actually larger than the outside. Uh, the pieces shattered inward and flaked off so there's probably a half a dozen good sized shards that get put into the inside of that and there will also be uh, missing material in that location as well. So by rehearsing this, uh, I have uh, alerted myself to any issues that might arise while I'm gl gluing this together. And uh, it really makes a difference because if, if you can get yourself into a position where you have most of it assembled, the glue starting to set up, it's difficult to take it apart without having to very quickly remove a lot of glue that's curing and and you find out that you, there's another piece that you can't get in no how no way so we do this sort of thing just to uh, expose the, the kind of things that we're showing right here missing pieces difficulties of assembly uh, and other issues that I need to be aware of once I start to put this together because when I build this it's got to be a complete rebuild. I can't stop halfway through it and come back tomorrow and finish. I need to do the entire thing. Otherwise, there's a liability that something uh, that you bonded together could move overnight, even if it's a hair's breadth. And then tomorrow, suddenly things don't fit anymore. And the further you go, the more out of alignment they can become. And when that happens, you have a lot more work to do to hide all these cracks, uh, which are difficult to see in this uh, video because they're so small. Uh, but you can see wherever there's tape, there's a crack. I've got about, I'm, I think I counted something like 20, 25 pieces in this plus a bag of shards so there's some big flakes and some little flakes in here most of this is coming out of this uh, hole blasted in the side anyway um, therein lies our current challenge and uh, so uh, I'm gonna have to fill this void and the other thing is I'm gonna have to fill this void somehow uh, I don't have to think about this because as you can see from the top of this my hands not going to fit in that hole okay and as I've already established I can't assemble it this far and then get this piece in it won't fit so I may have to assemble it all the way up to you know here uh, there's a uh, two or three large pieces that, co uh, that 
comprise the top of this. And I might have to assemble it to that point just so I can get to this hole. I'm going to have to be able to get to the inside of it. I can't just keep shoving stuff in here. Uh, so I've got some uh, issues to work out before I begin this. But um, I just wanted to point these kind of things out to you because it's not always a straightforward matter of putting glue on a shard and sticking them get together and, and, and until you rebuild a piece. There, there are um, little surprises and uh, challenges along the way. And I wanted to give you a hint of the kind of things that I come across while I'm doing that. So this is our next, uh, I would say, big job. There's a lot of work to it. And uh, we're going to be starting on that today. So, Okay, so um, I'm going to start putting my adhesive on this today. And as I said in the intro, I have, some, I have a problem in that I need to build, build this entirely or almost entirely in one go. But... I have this gaping hole here that has to be filled and it's it's going to be really difficult to fill this hole if I can't get at to the inside as well because if I put fill in here and I keep shoving it in here it's going to you know there's nothing to back it up and I won't be able to put tape on there because the opening is only going to be this big on the top there's no way I can get my hand in so uh, if I don't put that in there, I, this has to go in because it, it, it can't go in last because it won't fit in. It has to be built in uh, as we are building it. So in other words, I can't build the entire thing and then put this in later. And even if I could, the hole that's in the top, even this is not the hole that that makes isn't big enough to get my hand in there. So. Um, and then the other thing is, if you can see how thick the walls are on this vase right here, right about here is where the impact point is. The walls are a half inch thick. And here you can see that they're not a half inch thick. That's because these big flakes, all these things, came out of the inside of that. That's the other reason I need to get at the inside. So, I had a good long look at this thing and figured out that I can just take off this piece right here. And this is the biggest piece of the vase that's not broken. So now I take that piece out and I have access to the back side of this gaping hole here and this bunch of flakes here. And so right now I'm going to start putting these flaky chips back into place. And we'll start the rebuilding.
got it lying down because I'm going to have gravity assisting me here. All right, so I'm getting ready to fill these big holes in this uh, dragon base, and I'm using this uh, harder uh, epoxy that I use for big fills and making large missing pieces. And the product I'm using is called A plus B epoxy. I know they're all A plus B, but this brand is called A plus B brand. So here's the package. That's what I'm using. They use this to repair swimming pools. I think that's the reason it was invented. Uh, but it's a very hard, very strong epoxy. So it's, I use it as a fill and as a bonding agent. So I've got a big chunk of it here. I'm going to start mixing this. It's pretty stiff stuff at this point. Uh, actually, that's too small. <laughs> Get a bigger tile. And then... Alright, so it's fairly well mixed. It's a nice even color. Still pretty stiff. Whew, that's a workout. Now, what I'm doing is uh, I often have to mix this stuff up and I'll fill in missing pieces and, and then I'll have, you know, this much left over at the end. And I, I could just throw it away, but instead I just usually roll it up into a ball and I let it get cured and then I have a nice you know a nice hard hunk of this stuff I save them in a jar and I use them so now I have this old epoxy that I can use to fill spaces can you see this that I can use to fill spaces like this I'll put this paste in here and then I'll throw in a, one of these and cement that in and you know and I I'm not wasting this stuff and I and I can get this thing filled relatively quickly here. Get my putty down here into the
All right, so I'm gonna try to complete the construction of this dragon base right now. So I've got these three more pieces to put together. here, not because the bonding agent will set up, it's just that it starts to run if I don't go fast enough. Okay, so I've got my Hickstall all the way around the remaining edge. Ah, and I've assembled this part. And now this should cross your fingers. This should fit right together if I did my job right. Wunderbar. That is very good. Very good. I can still fill this void here from the outside. It's small enough now. I've got pretty good alignment everywhere. Except right here. But we can deal with that. And here's my other big void. And again, that's something I can fill from this side. So I'm going to set this aside for uh, a couple of days. Let this... Uh, bonding agent that I just applied cure enough to where it holds it together tightly it won't be cured for another five to seven day, uh, another five days uh, but in the meantime it'll be strong enough to hold it together I'll put this in a hot box that will speed up that curing and also uh, it will allow me to apply another round of that Hickstall to the outside of these cracks and I just want to make sure I get a good load of it in all of these joints where it can go in. And um, it's going to take a bunch of that stuff. So we'll mix up a fresh batch and do that. Once it's good and strong, then we can go ahead and fill all these voids. And then uh, smooth out all these crack lines and chips and, you know, all that stuff. All right, so I've done... Uh, couple of rounds of Hickstall on all the cracks uh, two or three rounds of that uh, I want to make sure I get a good penetration all, all the way around there and so now right now I'm going to do the fills of these major voids that are left here
Okay, that's the major holes. We'll come back later and do them around the millet pot. Okay, so I have now filled the major voids uh, and big chips, and I'm getting ready to do my cold or uh, my milli putt, <clears throat> and this will go around. I'll do this probably. I don't know. I'm probably guessing. Uh, at least three times. Well, I'm not going to make you watch me do this whole tedious process. I think you get the idea. I'm going to do this all the way around. And I'll give you, a sh give you a look at it once I get it all filled. Okay, so here's the first round of milliput fills on this. As you can see, I put it on the cracked lines. I went over my new fills with it also. It's still got a few more inches to go here. I just ran out of the milli putt that I've mixed. It's the next day now, and I'm going to file down this first round of fills. And here's what that looks like filed down.
All right, so we're finally ready to put some color on this. All right, now this is what typically happens when we start putting color on. Uh, it's difficult to see, especially on some of these patterns like this, when you miss a little spot on, on these fills. And <laughs> as soon as you start putting color on here, they'll, they become extremely obvious. Okay, in this case, I've got some, some pits here that need to be filled. And it's, I mean, unless you go over this entire thing with, there's another one, I'm pointing out all these little tiny holes here in the fill. Unless you go over this with a very bright light and a magnifying glass, you're not gonna find these. So, as soon as we put color on it, they stand out like a sore thumb. And then uh, we take this opportunity to address those. So we're in that stage right now. We'll put color on this. We hide those fill lines, and these things pop up. And then, you know, that's like one more round of minor fills. We'll fill it, we'll come back and paint over that. And then that's next step. So I'm going to continue going around this vase, get all this color on here, and I will find all these little things so that we can address them. So, but it's not unexpected, it's far from the course. It's, it's not a mistake, it's just the way we do what we do. Another thing I'll do when I'm done getting this background color in is I'm gonna go around and clean up some of this stuff so that I don't have to repaint all of this. So. For instance, right in here, I got some overspray. I have alcohol on this Q-tip to wipe off the overspray on this. I get the bulk of it this way, and then the details I can pick out with a toothpick. So. The idea is to eliminate any repainting I don't have to do. This, is good, this overspray goes everywhere. Especially on these round things. It goes around the corner, you know. I don't want to have to repaint all this. So all of this, even if it's a little bit, every little bit helps. And then it's just that much more I don't have to repaint. So I just wanted to give you a, a taste of that step. It's like especially in here we got all these little tiny claws and once that paint's dry it'll just come right off with a toothpick. So 
So it's a bit tedious, but it's a lot easier than repainting all this. So. Okay, so we're finally getting some color on this. And uh, this is where it gets really tedious. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to work my way in from the edge here. All right, so I've got my first initial fill-in of the blue on the top, just on the top part. And this is a several-step process. And so now I've done the outlining and the fill so that I've brought back all of this. And I will go over it again. As you can see, <clears throat> some places you'll see an outline or some delineation you know outlines and stems and whatever in here which you can't see in the initial round so now we're basically brought back the full design and it still needs some touch-up and some infill and some outlining and that'll be the next phase and then I plan on going over it finally with um, 
with an airbrush, which will soften some of these hard lines up, as you can see on this when this uh, glaze gets fired, it softens a little bit, the edges get soft. All right, so now I'm gonna bring in this blue on this uh, bottom section here. I'm gonna do all the blue first. Uh, so I have already, with a liquid mask, masked off this line around here and and this big area here so uh, I'll, I'll i'm gonna do this background stuff in here and here and then i have to go over it anyway with outlining and stuff you can, as you can see there are a thicker line going around all these things All right, so let's uh, take this masking medium off of here. So we're uh, continuing on this bottom design here and I made, I need to bring back one of these elements here and this, these other ones I can paint in by hand but I, I want to get this, they're so similar, I want to get this the right size. So I've made a paper mask for this quick and dirty uh, mask and I'll spray some color in here and hopefully my, ma my mask won't flop all over the place. <laughs> Okay, so uh, I need to put some masking tape on this <coughs> uh, vase to do some painting, and it's a little too sticky. And the problem with that is where the, the glaze, the protecting coat of glaze, uh, feathers out. If this tape goes across that, it sticks too tightly. And then when I go to peel this off, it may peel that 
layer up and and if it does it's going to really mess things up because it's, it's going to take the layer of paint below it with it so what i need to do is make this tape a little less sticky and the way i do that is i i stick it to my pants or my t-shirt and uh and this cotton in there will get stuck to the tape little bits of limb i need to keep doing this until it loses its tack and then it becomes a sort of a I, I just need it sticky enough to hold it in place. I don't really need to tape anything down or, you know, keep things from flying off. I just needed to get just sticky enough to where it'll stay where I put it, but when I peel it off, it won't take anything pointed up here. And when I stick it on, it just barely stays on there. And now when I peel that off, it it's stuck like a sticky note. It's very lightly tacked. All right, so now I need to uh, paint in these lines. And I could do it by hand, but this is going to be a lot quicker and more accurate if I just use a little masking tape. And uh, so I've detacked this tape a little bit so it's not as sticky. Next one, one next to it until that dries. Okay, so I've got a little schmutzy piece here where it's not perfect, and I'm just going to touch it up here with this toothpick. I just scrape off that overshoot here. It's hard to tape, put a piece of flat tape on a curved surface and get it right. It just, yeah. Well, it's finally time to start painting this red color. I'm going to work my way around these two dragons and uh, I'm going to do my outlining first <clears throat> just to establish where everything is.
All right, so I need to um, repaint in some more of this dragon, uh, but <laughs> it's fairly well obliterated right here, and I can almost see what I need to draw, uh, but not quite. So um, I have one dragon, the front of one dragon here, the front end of one dragon here, and the back end of another dragon here. So I have the front foot of one and the back foot of another, which on the other side of this, where I have the front of one and the back of the other, those are not obliterated. So I'm going to trace them here on this tracing paper. And then I'll turn this tracing paper into carbon paper and transfer it onto the other side. Alright, so I've got my tracing, this is the front, and to turn it into carbon paper, I just turn it over, and I draw on the back side. front again they'll press this graphite and transfer the image
I'm going to address these light areas now. Like in here, as you can see, it's lighter than the sections on either side of it. So I'm going to tone this down a bit. Just a, just a little. Take the lightness out of it. go the very light touch here.
places here where there's a gray mixed in with this red that's where the glazes have melted together. Like right here is a spot. I can really see it. back over some of this with the red again. And we go backwards and forwards a couple times. So here's what I just did looks like. We took out some of that highlighted and evened it out a little bit. And I'll do a little bit more of the red with an airbrush and I'll maybe go over this with the gray again. And we're getting close to being finished here. Okay, so I just need to touch up this last piece here and maybe finesse a little here and there all over it. But I got a spot here where some of the paint rubbed off. I'll just touch that up. <coughs> Airbrush. Right, so now I've switched colors. I've got some gray in here. So now we'll get a cold glaze on this whole thing, buff it up, and she'll be done. Well, here's our dragon face finally finished.